right friends good morning and welcome we are going to discuss important events of the week this is 8th week this is starting from 16th february to 22nd february we are going to discuss 30 minutes duration for lecture part and two sessions of question and answers 30 minutes each as usual for this week also what are the important events of the week before going into the details let us look into the aspects what are the important events of the week first and the foremost event is the visit of the president of sri lanka mr sirisena to india maitripala sirisena's visit to india aero india show in bangalore then the third important event is global renewable energy conference successful launch of uh, brahmos supersonic cruise missile other important event for the week in international affairs is clashes in kokang region of myanmar clashes in kokang region of myanmar and beheading of 21 coptic christians by isis and when it comes to sports quarter finals of ranji trophy cricket and ipl auctions which involved big bets on some players right let us look at these events one by one now right The first and the foremost event is the visit of the president of Sri Lanka to India. We all very well know elections were held in Sri Lanka in the month of January 2015. In those elections, Mr. Maithripal Sirisena elected as the president and Mr. Rajapaksa lost in the elections. And after getting elected as the president, Mr. Maithripal Sirisena chose India for his visit for the first time. that means india is the first country which he visited prior to his visit their foreign minister also came to india and had discussions with indian counterparts right so during mr maithripala sirisena's visit what are the important events that took place during his visit first and the foremost thing is india and sri lanka signed nuclear cooperation agreement India and Sri Lanka signed nuclear cooperation agreement for transfer of expertise and training for transfer of expertise and training agreement was signed and subsequently they are planning to have trilateral cooperation agreement along with Maldives what is bilateral what is trilateral when the issue involves only two countries that is called bilateral when it involves cooperation among three countries it is called a trilateral so along with the maldives maldives is another island nation small islands put together where is maldives maldives is in indian ocean and arabian sea just south of india in indian ocean and arabian sea along with maldives sri lanka and india they would like to have trilateral cooperation these are the important events which took place during mr maithripala sirisena's visit the other important event is agreements were signed on agricultural cooperation cultural cooperation and mou is also signed on nalanda university what is nalanda university nalanda university nalanda is the place of learning in good old and days the highest degree of excellence existed during 5th century to 12th century in india this place of nalanda is near rajgir in bihar almost center of excellence existed from 5th century to 12th century the ruins of this nalanda center of excellence or still available any one of us can see having known this i would like to tell you one more point in the year 2007 based on the idea of mr apj abdul kalam 
government of india came forward to open nalanda university afresh accordingly in the year 2010 nalanda university act was passed by parliament and subsequently in the year 2014 this nalanda university was restarted and sri lankan government has shown interest in developing buddhist studies at nalanda university during the visit of mr sirsena i hope you understood brief about nalanda university and the other important events of mr sirsena visit are his visit to bodh gaya where is bodh gaya bodh gaya is about 100 kilometers from patna this is the place where gautam buddha got enlightenment you all very well know sri lanka is the country predominantly buddhist he visited bodh gaya where gautam buddha got enlightenment and subsequently he visited tirupati on his way back to sri lanka back so this is about maitripala sirisena's visit during the week and look into the other issue pradhan mantri jandhan yojana government officially announced pradhan mantri jandhan yojana the largest financial inclusion scheme in the world this pradhan mantri jandhan yojana was started in the month of august and by january 31st 2015 almost 12 and 1/2 crore accounts were opened 12 and 1/2 crore accounts were opened and almost 11 crore rupee cards were issued and these depositors though it is intended for zero balance account but still banks got approximately 10000 crores of money through these accounts so this is the largest financial inclusion scheme in the world as announced by government of india in its full page advertisements issued recently in various newspapers so please remember the largest cash transfer scheme in the world is dbtl direct benefit transfer for lpg and the largest financial inclusion scheme is this pradhan mantri jan dhan yojana where 12 and 1/2 crore accounts were opened within a short period of around 5 months right look into the next issue by elections were held in 6 states for 6 assembly constituencies as well as one lok sabha constituency for the lok sabha constituency of bongaon in west bengal all india trinamool congress retained the seat and in the by elections to the six state assemblies ruling parties in those respective states got elected and there are not many surprises in this by election results the vote share of aidmk is increasing day by day in tamil nadu in spite of the conviction on ms jailalitha in the disproportionate assets case second important aspect is the vote share of bjp is increasing in west bengal these two trends are evident when you analyze these by elections look into the next issue aero india show 2015 aero india show this is one of the biggest air shows this was recently held at bangalore elahanka air force station so recently aero india show was held at bangalore prime minister narendra modi inaugurated the aero india show what exactly this aero india show means basically this aero india show is to showcase the talent of various manufacturing companies that means later on business deals will be done that means if any manufacturing company is coming up with some innovative product or if any manufacturing company wants to sh- show their might in defense production this aero india show is the platform to showcase their expertise not only their expertise but also commercial deals can be done through this aero india show in this connection i would like to emphasize indian defense budget is approximately 2.3 lakh crores or you can say 40 billion dollars india's defense budget is approximately 2.3 lakh crores out of which 60% will go for manufacturing of equipment 60% of the budget will go for 
equipment and most of this equipment is imported because we are not manufacturing the required equipment for defense sector we are still dependent on imports from several countries we are still dependent on imports from several countries so various manufacturing companies will showcase their talent through this aero india show right look into the next issue pm speaks on religious tolerance this issue assumed importance because recently several churches were vandalized in the national capital region recently several churches were vandalized in the national capital region and recently the prime minister attended the ceremony marking the sainthood to father kuriakos and mother euphrasia recently the prime minister attended the ceremony marking the sainthood of father kuriakos and mother euphrasia and several christian leaders were also attended what is sainthood i would like to explain a little bit about the sainthood sainthood is nothing but extraordinary honor given for his or her holiness this is sainthood this term we use in christianity when it comes to hindu we call rishi or rishi when it comes to buddhism we call bodhisattva like that the highest degree of honor is given to the holy persons that is in christianity sainthood recently the prime minister participated in the celebrations of elevation of sainthood to father kuriakos and mother euphrasia and in the celebrations the prime minister categorically stated that every individual had an undeniable right to preach their own set of religion that means religious discrimination will not be there and violence against any religion will not be accepted as categorically stated by the prime minister right so vandalization of churches on one side and prime minister's assurance to the religious minorities that we cannot accept violence against any religion clearly imbibed confidence in the minority community of the country right let us move on to the next one coast guard dig bk loshali's remarks i would like to recollect one incident that took place on the midnight of december 31st during my first lecture i explained in clear terms on december 31st midnight indian coast guard intercepted one pakistani boat pakistani boat was trying to enter the maritime waters of india at the time indian coast guard alerted the pakistani boat to go back but they have not relented and they blew themselves off the pakistani boat with four persons on board was blew itself off this was the statement given by the defense minister manohar parikar subsequently pakistan denied these allegations but now a controversy arose because the dig of coast guard who was associated with the incident stated that they have ordered for the blowing up of the pakistani boat recently dig mr bk loshali associated with coast guard stated that they have ordered the blowing of the pakistani boat so this is total contradiction to what was then stated by the defense minister defense minister then stated pakistani port blew themselves off but now the dig says they blew the pakistani boat so because of quite contradiction in this a board of enquiry was ordered against the dig of coast guard a board of enquiry was ordered against the dig of coast guard and at the same time he was transferred to the zonal office also the board of enquiry was ordered and he was transferred to the zonal office what was stated by the defense minister on 1st january was different from what now stated by mr bk loshali dig of coast guard so defense ministry immediately ordered a board of enquiry and he was transferred to the 
journal office right let us move on to the next issue global renewable energy conference this is the first renewable energy conference our energy minister is mr piyush goel and government of india has got ambitious plan of almost 1 lakh megawatt of solar energy by 2022 and 60000 megawatt of wind energy by 2022 please remember government of india has got huge target ambitious target of clean energy ambitious target of clean energy 1 lakh megawatt of solar energy by 2022 and 60000 megawatt of wind energy by 2022 in this context reinvest summit was held and several multinational firms gave their assurance that they will come up with 2.7 lakh megawatt during the next 5 years and remember sun edison of usa came forward and committed to produce 15200 megawatt of clean energy sun edison energy firm of united states of america committed that they will create 10000 megawatt of solar energy and 5200 megawatt of wind energy by the year 2022 so government's ambitious plan of producing clean energy is clearly on the cards and 1 lakh megawatt of solar energy by 2022 though looks herculean task but it appears that government is moving in the right direction look at the next one successful launch of brahmos supersonic cruise missile brahmos before going into brahmos let us look at ins kolkata what is ins kolkata this is the warship probably this is the largest warship built in india by mezegon docks limited mezegon docks limited where is it mezegon docks limited is the government of india undertaking for building warships and it is situated in bombay or mumbai and mezegon docks built this warship ins kolkata and this warship was commissioned on 16th august 2014 this is basically used to fire missiles this is about ins kolkata largest warship built in india and look at brahmos what is brahmos please look at the words in brahmos b r a h that indicates the name of river brahmaputra brahmaputra is in india last three letters m o s m o s indicates moskva or otherwise masko that is the name of river near masko in russia so brahmos means brahmaputra and masko the initial letters of brahmaputra and masko put together makes brahmos so brahmos is the missile jointly built by india and russia here in the name let us look at the other aspect brahmos supersonic cruise missile what is supersonic supersonic is nothing but when the speed of the missile or speed of the aircraft is more than speed of sound then that is called supersonic when the speed of missile or speed of aircraft is less than speed of sound it is called subsonic please remember the difference between supersonic and subsonic speed of sound when the aircraft is moving with the speed more than speed of sound it is supersonic when the aircraft is moving with speeds less than the speed of sound it is subsonic here the missile is supersonic and it was recently test fired from ins kolkata it can carry 300 kg of warhead and 290 km is its range and it was recently successfully test fired from ins kolkata this brahmos can be launched from either land or from ship or from submarine it has got all features for launch it can be launched from anywhere and recently the supersonic missile was tested from ins kolkata ins kolkata can launch 16 missiles at a time 
तो प्लीज रिमेम्बर ब्रह्मोस इज द सुपरसोनिक क्रूज मिसाइल सुपरसोनिक मीन्स द स्पीड विच इज मोर देन द स्पीड ऑफ साउंड सेकेंड थिंग इज इट इज बिल्ड जॉइंटली बाई इंडिया एंड रशिया थर्ड थिंग इज इट कैन कैरी कन्वेंशनल वॉर हेड ऑफ थ्री हंड्रेड के जीस फोर्थ इज इट्स रेंज इज टू नाइंटी किलोमीटर्स आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड वॉट इज ब्रह्म हाउस लुक इन टू द नेक्स्ट वन इंपॉर्टेंट डॉक्यूमेंट स्मगल्ड फ्रॉम वेरियस मिनिस्ट्रीज वाई टू दे स्मगल दिस स्मगलिंग ऑफ इंपॉर्टेंट डॉक्यूमेंट्स स्पेक प्लेस बिकॉज दे कैरी लॉट ऑफ सीक्रेट इंफॉर्मेशन टू वेरियस इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट इन एडवांस बिफोर द बजट इज प्रेजेंटेड बिफोर द बजट इज प्रेजेंटेड दे स्मगल इंपॉर्टेंट इंफॉर्मेशन एंड कैरी दिस इंफॉर्मेशन टू वेरियस बिजनेस हाउसेस दैट मीन्स दे टेक देयर एक्शंस based on this secret information and they preempt what is there in the budgets documents right so several people were arrested including one senior journalist and the employees of various ministries are also being questioned in this regard right look into the next one right when it comes to international affairs one unfortunate incident took place that is beheading of 21 coptic christians of egypt by isis isis islamic state of iraq and syria recently beheaded 21 coptic christians of egypt these christians what is meant by coptic christian they are the native christians of egypt they are the native christians of egypt because they are the original christian inhabitants of egypt later on as the history says most of them got converted to islam but still almost 10% of the population of egypt are still christians they are called native christians and almost 80 to 90% got converted to islam so almost 10% of the population in, in egypt are following christian faith recently some of these christians went to libya and there these 21 coptic christians were beheaded by isis immediately Egypt started air strikes on the ISIS installations. Unfortunate incidents are taking place across Middle East, across North Africa, and several countries are in turmoil because of terrorist activities that are taking place in many countries in the world. Right? Let us look into the next one. Ethnic clashes in Kokang region of Myanmar. Where is Kokang region? it is towards the northeastern part of myanmar it is towards northeastern part of myanmar bordering yunnan province of china northeastern part of myanmar bordering yunnan province of china who is the president of myanmar thin sein is the president of myanmar here this region northeastern part of myanmar there is a sect called kokang they want more provincial autonomy they want more powers to their local governments because of this they are fighting with the myanmaris army they are fighting with the myanmaris army they want more provincial autonomy they want more powers and china's yunnan province has got just border with this and most of this kokang rebels fled to yunnan province of china and there is a feeling that china indirectly assisting these rebels whatever the truth is please remember these kokang ethnic minorities are staying in northeastern part of myanmar bordering china right 
they are of chinese origin quarter finals of ranji trophy ranji trophy quarter finals were held during the week and in the ranji trophy quarter finals four teams entered the sem- entered the semi finals mumbai maharashtra karnataka and tamil nadu entered the semi finals i would like to tell you a brief about the history of ranji trophy ranji trophy was started in the year 1934 This Ranjit Trophy was started in the name of Ranjit Singh ji. This Ranjit Trophy was started in the name of Ranjit Singh ji. Who is Ranjit Singh ji? Ranjit Singh ji was the famous cricketer and he was the ruler of Navanagar territory in the present day Gujarat. In those days several princely states were there. This Navanagar was one such princely state. Ranjit Singh ji ruled this Navanagar up to 1933, and in the year 1934, this Ranji Trophy cricket tournament got started. And one more important thing I would like to tell you: this Ranji Trophy cricket tournament is being held between various cricket associations, not between states. India has got 29 states and 7 union territories and these ranji trophy teams are 27 there may be more than one team for each state if you look at gujarat there are three teams from gujarat one is baroda the other one is saurashtra and the third one is gujarat if you look at maharashtra there are three teams one is bombay Second one is Vidarbha. Third one is Maharashtra. That means there may be more number of teams for each state, but all together there are twenty-seven teams. They are based on the cricket associations in a particular region, and this tournament is held every year. And last year during 2013-14, Karnataka was the winner, and during the period from 1934 till date bombay won the tournament maximum number of times bombay won the tournament maximum number of times and this year let us see who is going to win this ranji trophy right look at the last one of the week this is ipl auctions for 2015 in the ipl auctions delhi daredevils delhi daredevils daringly purchased by spending more money if you look at these names yuvraj singh was bought for 16 crore rupees by delhi daredevils and royal challengers bangalore purchased dinesh karthik for 10.5 crores and surprises of this year's ipl buys are one is shreya sayya who was bought by delhi daredevils for 2.6 crore and KC Kariyappa by Kolkata Knight Riders for 2.4 crores these two are the surprises and Yuvraj Singh got 16 crore he is the top most cricketer who got maximum amount in IPL auctions friends with this i am going to close this lecture part please do join for question and answer sessions for the week and have a nice day thank you